order of business, we're going to have a motion to go into non-public session to um, take up a uh, personnel issue. I don't want to begin. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to go into non-public session for a personnel issue. Uh, Denise? Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike? Yes. We are non-public. Well, hello. Oh, we, we, so I need a motion to go back into um, public session. Go back to public session. I'll second. And Denise? Yes. Mike? Yes. Miles? Yes. yes. We're back in public session. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to get in my wallet. I thought she was too. Tom, how are you? Mike, I am doing just great. Thanks. How are you?
very impressive, and it was just wonderful. However, um, at one of the hearings, I don't remember if it was that one or a subsequent one, there were a lot of questions raised by residents, and most of the residents' questions weren't so much about the new building per se, but about what are we going to do about the old building, what are we going to do about this one, how are we going to afford it, you know, lots and lots of questions like that. And when they were raised, apparently, um, Charlie Putnam explained that the Space Needs Committee couldn't answer questions about this building and others because they weren't charged with it. And, and, and that was entirely um, correct. If they're not charged with it, they can't answer questions that were raised by the people. So I guess my point is that it's that night, whatever that hearing was, I thought there was a general feeling of the people that were attending that um, they wanted to have some of those questions answered before we were charging forward with this project. And, and it's a, certainly a, a lovely project. It's just I think a lot of people felt that certain things had to be answered. Right. And I think that I would hope that um, the board would consider going in and delving into those questions and matters that have been raised by the public. It seems to me there's a number of them. You know, for instance, is there is there a way to bring this um, building up to snuff, you know, bring it into the 21st century a little bit? Is there a way to do that? What would be the cost? If we just, um, if we kept town hall stuff here and just had a police station or moved the police station and both there, you know, what are, is it going to improve police response? Is it going to, you know, how how much do the police use this building now? Is there another configuration that would work for them? I don't know. I, I don't think we've ever had a chance to really look into that. And I think it's unfair to the police not to look into some of those questions and answer them fully before we go forward because it's a big fight if we start getting bond council involved and start borrowing money and things like that. And it seems to me, once we get on that train, we won't be able to stop. It will keep going. I think we just have to be careful before we make that step. So that's all I'm asking that the town do is look into those other things and try to figure out, you know, whether we need like an engineering study to see what would make this building more habitable for what we use it for. I mean, I don't know what the answers are particularly. It's just that I don't want to jump into it before we've had the answers and then all of a sudden we have this building, we haven't figured out what to do with it, we don't know whether we should raise it, whether we should try to sell it, whether we have to fix it before we sell it, you know, who knows. What is the impact going to be if we move stuff from downtown out into a residential area? I don't know that we've done any studies to figure out how that would impact both downtown and how it would impact Silver Street itself. I, I know I know some of you live on Silver Street, maybe it'll affect you, I don't know. But I think we should look at that, you know, is the parking different there? You know, I know they talked about how many spaces they'd have, but I mean, here we have overflow, we do have across the street we can use for evening rooms, but we couldn't get away with that. On um, Silver Street, you wouldn't want to have people parked all the way up and down Silver Street, I think it would be a very bad traffic hazard. So those are the types of questions. And also, you know, for the police themselves, you know, what are we going to be looking at for the future of our police um, department itself? You know, are we, you know, is crime going up, down? Do we have the right number of officers to meet, to meet these questions? Will we be still using the same type of force in the future? Are we going to be growing or as a community having a higher population? You know, we've never looked at any of that, and I think we've... I'm just saying, I think we have to look at these things carefully. Because if we take our time and do it right, you know, we should, we should do it. But I think we, should, we need to take our time and do it right if we're going to do it at all. Th those were my things, and I urge you to consider those items before we start sticking it on a warrant article. Because I think our, our townspeople really appreciate it if they can get some real data to answer their questions. Well, once they have it, they can make a more informed choice. So, thank you. That was, that was it. <laughs> thank you. Any other uh, public input? Any other input? Before we move on. All right, seeing none. Tom, come on up. I'm trying to say. 
Building Inspector, Code Enforcement. Yes, sir. On up. First thing we have on the agenda is the junkyard license. Right. And I sent an update this morning. Yeah. You know, my email yesterday. Yeah. And I'm saying that I was kind of surprised to find that out myself because in all the years I've been doing this, ownership was irrelevant. It was the use. Right. But in this particular case, that RSA, I thought, um, is fairly clear. And they even gave a further explanation. So I sent a, an inquiry into the legal um, the New Hampshire Municipal Association. I haven't gotten a response yet. Right. So everyone's clear until Tom would do in a minute, if, if, if everyone had that chance to read it. Tom found a statute that pertains to junkyards. Um, normally, uh, and only junkyards, uh, normally if uh, you've got a, a a non-conforming use, a garage, and John owns the garage, John sells it, and it's in a place where it can't, it shouldn't be, like a non-conforming use, um, and Mary buys the garage, as long as there's not a, a substantial amount of time between when it was an active garage and when Mary takes it over, there's not a problem. They can, she can still have her garage as a grandfather would use. Apparently the junkyard's not so much the case. So we need to find out um, whether or not, the, and when this transfer of ownership happened, whether or not there was ever a public hearing by the planning board or zoning board, um, right. what course of action the select board took back yeah. then, because it may not have been, uh, it may have been done right, it may not have been, and if it wasn't done right, then it shouldn't have been operating all these years. Right, I think that's going to be the key. I, I'm, um, I'm going to ask Sarah to look, because I'm not sure, if, was she? Oh, no. Yeah. So, the record, so, okay. <laughs> Caroline did a little digging today, and there was, let me see what she said, what years, there's quite a span of years that it could possibly have happened in. Yeah, I seem to recall Mr. Casanelli saying, you know, during, was it, two weeks ago, that He's been there 13 years, which I thought it was 17. Oh, did he? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I thought he said since 2001, but oh. my memory is not. All right, so, but even maybe. so I'm guessing, I was guessing 05, so oh, it's still so the same. same so. Yeah. Caroline writes, there's a building permit in the file on, in 1980 under Edward Day. Uh, the earliest assessment card we have is dated 2005, at which time it was owned by the current owner. So the change happened between 1980 and 2005, but certainly since zoning was adopted in 1971. So we're both right. Yes, <laughs> you are. You are, but there's still quite a span of years that we need to go back and look at the minutes if they're very well, accessible. Or we could put the burden of proof on the owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if he has it, or if he did it, then certainly he would have a record of it. And I, I should, yeah. personally would doubt that that happened, but I... I you weren't uh, you weren't helping the town then, were you? I was. You were. Yeah, I started in uh, '94 or '5. Oh, okay. But it was at the time it was it was just strictly plan review and inspections. It wasn't, right. um, you know, there was no office hours. It was just kind of an right, 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 thing. right. So um, it would not I, have been. Well, it may or may not have been something they would have called you. I guess. Right, and I I know that I. I'm pretty sure I know <laughs> that I have never. Um, I never looked into anything like that, never, you know, discussed. And it seems to me it would just be like everyone would assume that Mr. Day stopped, Mr. Cassinelli started, and it was just right. seamless, right? Just, yeah. So maybe we should go back and find out who the planning board chair was, too, then, and see if it ever went there. I know who the, the zoning board chair was. Yeah. So, so uh, if you'd like, in the meantime, I'll, I'll communicate with Mo and ask him if he's... Yeah, sure. If he's got something, and if so, what is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. But that aside, there are some other issues, though, right? So he's got two issues now, or an additional issue. He may or may not have been, well, I don't think it's his fault, but he probably shouldn't have been operating if he hadn't gone through this other process. Correct. All these years. Yeah. So, but besides that, we have the issue of the, uh, the use that we know was never approved. Right. Tell me. And I'm, yeah, I'm pretty confident of that. I mean, even if Mr. Day did it 
as accessory to the junkyard. That's one thing, but certainly not a whole separate cast towing 24 hour. Definitely not that. Mm -hmm. So that is positively something that we can take action on. All right. So the board have discussed in the past sending a letter to Mr. Or having you sent a letter to Mr. Casanelli asking him to suspend his his 24 hour towing sure. operations until it's. Um, been reviewed by the planning board. He needs to go through that process. Is there any objection to that? No. Are we asking him to take the tow trucks off property? Because okay. how else are you going to control it? That's a good question. What do you think, Tom? Well, um, there's always a provision that, I mean, if we need to, we can get, um, or we can either ask the police for help or just go to court for cease and desist. I mean, if he doesn't want to do it voluntarily, there are definitely ways that we can do it legally. Right. right? I'm just saying. It, I mean, at, at two in the morning, they're gonna think who's gonna oh. who's gonna know we're doing it. The neighbors. Well, other than neighbors, <laughs> but they have um, not been shy up to that point. Yeah. Right, right. Letting us know. So what's I didn't going know on, if, so. We, if we should have it with them off the property or if we just take their word for it. Well, I'm guessing that if that were to happen, he would probably move the base of operations somewhere else because mm -hmm. it's fairly lucrative business, and mm -hmm. he does go a lot. And he's called by some of the neighborhood. Uh, but, Area police departments. So I can't imagine you just say, all right, I won't do anything. Mm -hmm. And if he stores his truck somewhere else. Sounds like one of our right. problems. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. And so we were also thinking that the junkyard license renewal process should be on hold uh, pending the review by the planning board of that non conforming use of the towing operation. But now with the new information you've given us, I think positively. I mean, not a new wrinkle anyway, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we handle that, but. I think, I, you know, I can put it in the same, the same message that we're looking at, we're looking into this. Yeah. If you, as a new owner, have information, then please provide it. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, the, we can suspend the license. I checked with the Municipal Association, I'm pretty sure we should spend the license. You'll have to stop, period. Okay. Just so that's my other next question is. Oh yes. Does he have to suspend all operations? I would, I would think so. I mean, we found out this information. Yes, it's you know several years after, but that doesn't change the fact that it's ongoing right. on a daily basis. So right. there's a new violation theoretically every day. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot to uh, unpack here. I guess. Yeah. But at least we we know for one thing for sure for one thing that the, the towing operation needs to be suspended for now. Yes. Mm -hmm. and pending a review. I don't see it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you'll get something together for us, telling them that, and you'll yeah. follow up with them? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Interesting process for all of us. Um, anything else we need to know about the junkyard? Um, not that I'm aware of. I'm okay. just waiting for a response. Good times. All right. Uh, we have a camper on Prospect Street and a new camper on Rollins Road. At oh. 571, I think I saw right that. Over the, right over the railroad tracks. So if you were heading house on the left. back to Dover, going down Rollins Road, yeah. it's, the, it's the first house on the left. It's a little um, manufactured home okay. on the left, right after the railroad tracks. All the windows plugged, it's got an antenna wraps, got wires running along to the two-car so garage. So they have a garage at this mobile home, and then there's the space, and then there's the home, right? In between the garage and the home, there's now a camper. So it's sort of masked a little bit, but you can see the tail end of it sticking out, and the oh, lights nice. on, and then the antenna and the, is like... like I say, the wires are going to the garage, yeah, taped on so, the doors. Yeah. And what was the address again? 571 Rollins. It's 571. the first one. It, follow, it follows the yeah. railroad track. Yeah. It's the first one for that. Oh, I'm sure if I can find it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, okay, so there's that one. Um, Prospect Street, they didn't send a second, more threatening letter, okay. which I don't know that if they picked it up or... We send it certified mail. Or yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we send it certified and first class just in case. Yeah. And, Good idea. Um, I didn't think to ask Caroline about you know if it's, if it's yeah, been received or not today. But I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned I put in the letter that they had 15 days to just stop, mm -hmm. and I think that went out Monday. Last Monday. Last, uh, well, we could go. Yeah. Okay. I think so. They still would be within that time frame. Okay. But I'll, I'll check with Caroline while I'll see. All right. I don't have anything else. That's probably enough. Oh, um, no, 
Rollins, other end of Rollins Road, uh, 112. Have we had any other, uh, that's the, the junkyard in the front yard. Oh. In the backyard. In the right. side yard. Yeah. I sent an inquiry to, to uh, uh, Robert, Steve Roberts' office, and Kevin responded saying that he hadn't heard from that guy. And I sent him pictures, you know, from a while ago and then, and then recently, and said it's... Still not. It's still, yeah, yeah, and I'm sure the guy is just waiting. Yeah, um, he's allowed one unregistered vehicle, and he's got. Oh, there several. are, there are at least four. So. Yeah. So th that leads me to another one, actually, Tom. And now I've already forgotten the number. A Foundry okay. Street. There's um, a house. The below, right across from the garden. Yeah. A mobile home. Yeah. And there's four cars. Unregistered. I believe. They look like grass all over running. <coughs> and there's some storage, like um, box cars that you use for like storage things. Oh, right, yeah. Right at the bottom, they have a way I think it's the last house. Right in the On the right. right. If you're heading towards the illusion, it's on the right hand side. It's, the, it's set back a bit. I, I don't know who lives there. And I, I apologize, it's not having a point across. I'll check it out. Jog my memory. So. Yeah. We're going to go after other people for having junk cars all the same thing. So. Now, is it just motor vehicles or is it just like junk? Well, <laughs> it, it can be anything. Yeah. Because it, there's um, another one on Rollins Road right before you get to Oak. On the guy on the right? <laughs> yes. If you recall, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came in. She and, wasn't on the board of it. No, right. I'm the only. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's I had the right. pleasure of it. Right. I think actually the night that he came and proved it, he was in the right, I was out sick. So, uh, uh, he's in the right? Yeah, it's yeah. a different issue, not a uh, garbage okay. issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was he was moving his stuff in and going to clean it up and make it better. And, uh, he still has them. And, um, oh, yeah. He's in the process of selling his property there, too. So. I can't imagine that the, the real estate agent yeah. hasn't told him to clean his property up. Right. He would have a better chance of selling it. Anyway. But we should follow up with that too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of, uh, it's like a dump truck or something in the backyard oh, now. Yeah. That's one of, I thought it was one of those fishing shacks or something. That's what well, I he thought might, it have, might have a ball house. Yeah. He, he has a ball house out there too. Growing. And there's a yeah. front, uh, back home, maybe a little mini mm -hmm. backhoe or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's one thing to it scream too. Yeah. I mean, but it's not making much attempt to. Mm -hmm. If he's in construction and he's storing it, then I guess, you know, there's other places where we don't say anything, right. so. But, oh, it's, it's, it's quite like that. Yeah. So, besides that, Tom, we have nothing else for you to work on. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. <laughs> anything else for us? I'm, nope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. If Molly stays longer, he's going to be able to do it. Can you yeah. think of something else? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll definitely keep you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Glad to see you. Thank you. George. Come on. How's it going? Going good. I was, I was striving to go in alphabetical order. I didn't see the fire chief coming out. You're here now, George. Sorry. No, let him go. We're trying to have some sense of order. That's why we were going in alphabetical order, but. I haven't got achieved it yet, so. <coughs> Someday. Okay, what do we, uh... Whatever you have for us, you can do your stuff first, then we can go over what we have. What's that? Bailiff, you wanted me to get a P.O. for Bailiff. I wanted you to get a no, P.O. for Bailiff? That's right, I was asking to get a P.O. for the price of the Bailiff. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we were confused about what the actual price was. And so we wanted you to get that. Right, I get that it's, it's, it's part of this budget, but we were confused because of when we were going over the budget on Friday, me and Caroline, George came in. And we were okay. confused about the like end Friday, price of what it was. Okay. okay. This is the one that we said we were going to buy, but we didn't. The refurbished one that we were going to rent right. for a right. few months and then. And but then, then we haven't rented it yet because it, hasn't been, it wasn't available. Is it available now? It's just, it's just there now. I'm waiting for Mr. Electric, so it's not there for. No. Okay. No. All so right. what was the total price? The total price in the bill was 17 dollars 17 Okay. Okay. But we're not worried about that tonight. You just wanted to know how much it was. 
Well, he doesn't have a PO to buy it. There's not one on file. Do we need to have PO? If we're purchasing it all at once, but we don't have, do we have money in the budget to purchase one all at once? Or? I thought we were doing installments over a few and months and then I, it yeah. was going in the budget for next year. However, I thought we determined that we had some money in the budget and Carolyn's yeah. not here, so I can't confirm that. I know, we were working on the budget. No, that I knew. So we that's why so. we were going to have a discussion, but I'm okay. not comfortable with Caroline not being here. She it's not going to get hooked up to, uh, tomorrow anyway, yeah. George, so can we, yeah. thank you for doing it. Can we do it next Monday? Talk about I'll, it? Yeah. I'll have Caroline yeah. here. Yeah. Just put it back. And we'll I'll make sure she's here to discuss yeah. it or she'll discuss she it with me for us. And yeah. I know what's going on with that. that one. We had a conversation today, but that didn't come up. So. Okay. The rest of the agenda did, but that didn't come up. So. I have some trees that need to come down. However, they can't do it until right after the first of the year. Okay. I got $3,700 in the account. Mm -hmm. uh, you, want, you want to do a PO one? Yes, if you want it done. He said he'll be able to get it. If you want to be able to pay for it with this year's money, yeah, yeah. let's do it now. Okay. Uh, PO for urban tree for
might have been part of the calculation being able to do the bailer, so we may not be able to do the bailer. Right, so I need this. to, yeah, I, I want to make sure that we're not, we're not overextending ourselves in one way or another. So we're going to meet on the 10th and on the 17th, so, of this month, so not a meeting on Christmas Eve, sorry to everyone. But I've got other so on the snowplow, if you get this so. piece of equipment, will you still be going after the other piece of equipment next year? Yes. Why? This is just this is a, just a plow for the skid steer. Yeah. But why the do you need the other one? The other machine is too. This machine is still too big. It's just this is so we can you know plow the sidewalk versus trying to try and bucket the snow out of the way when it's wet, heavy snow that the snowblower don't handle. The temporary solution of the outdoors. Right. And the, the plow would still but be. No, available. then what do we do with it afterwards? You're still well, I'm not saying I'm in favor. I'm saying no. it's temporary. No. That's all. I'm just. I don't know what we do with that. That's why I want to think about it for a week and we want to talk about it. Make sure we actually have the money in place and we can ask some more of those questions then. This for a brand new one? Yeah, it's a brand new plow. Is there I tried to market for this one? And they didn't have any use on the ground. And it's well, a uh, wrong time of year to be looking for it. Snow yeah, I mean, it's useful for the same thing. So, well, let's just say we buy it, George. And then next year, on the CIP next year for the other articulator mm -hmm. motor. Mower, or not mower, or loader. loader. I don't remember, but I guess it'll look right there. Articulated loader is on for 2020. So let's just say we buy this piece tonight for $2,500. What are we going to do with it next year? You can still use it to clear the transfer station. It's, it's not going to go away. Right. Why don't you know, it's not going to go away? It can still be used for snow removal when we need it. I mean, it's it, this is just making we clearing the sidewalks easier. I mean, try to run a snowball with an inch of snow which, or two inches of snow, and then just scrape this off with a plow. Right. And then when the heavy wet snow we, and clogging the snowball, I try right. clearing the sidewalks with the, with the bucket. It's just right. a real pain in the I'm sure it probably is. Okay. All right. Well, we need to think about it because we need right. to figure out if, if we haven't met. We have to figure out where we've moved just recently, or we're suggesting we're going to move money around to pay for the bailer. So let's just hold off on it until next week if we could please any other uh any other po's in the, in the box oh, okay. not yet not yet all right fair enough we appreciate what you're trying to do it's just we need to figure out if we can where we're at in the budget that's all that time of year where we need to be uh we need to be very cautious so um we have three things on the agenda to talk to you about covert sligo covert what the next steps are going to be are you what are you thinking for I still think we need to remove the top pipe on the first culvert. Yeah. And open up the bottom of it. Okay. That's stuff we can probably do ourselves. Okay. So we're not going to, you know, nothing there. Yeah. And we'll pave it in the top after we repair it. Okay. So that's all going to be in house under road work. Okay. So we don't need additional money going into the, cap, the culvert fund for that. Then. No. Okay. I mean, you may need some cul to buy some culvert, but culvert's not, you know, a couple hundred bucks a piece. So right. something got to be replaced on Sligo Road besides that. We have that washed, undermined, and this last rain we've had, oh. uh, and we filled it in. I mean, it's just started washing the end of it out, but okay. it's down by the farm there also. And if you're talking about the big culvert, the big one. Yeah. then I'm thinking, think, talking to the engineers, it'd be about, you know, right around $50,000 we can re, uh, we can put riprap and stuff that's Sure, up the bank and, right. and then we can open the road back. Yeah, so we'll move the Jersey barriers back or I'll take them away. All right. All right so, so we're thinking it's 50000 to do that work? Yeah, he said he said twenty five to 50000 You can give it, you know, go by figure, depending on what you want to do. You can, you know, it's getting somebody, not something we can do. It's going to be equipment high. So that could be, you know, the deeper thing. Okay, so. We'll check and see what we have in there currently, and then um, we took some out last year to do the uh, um, coal work and repair work down uh, the outfall down the. Mountains. And again, it, this is not something that has to happen next year. Okay, but well, we can start. We want to start saving. For right, it, so. and but we can open the road back up anytime. We can take the move the barriers back a little bit on one side, but making it reinforcing the the bank as he said. Be not a bad idea before you know before you change anything. The other side, the barriers were put in when they did the road. He said we could either take them out or move. There was nothing there before. Right. Okay. 
So we can we can widen that road back down there and get that road back to the way we're with. On the river side of the road? Yeah. That they're not. Yeah, they should they never had you know not, I think we probably we, we could put a guardrail in there. Yeah. It's inexpensive. And then take the dirty berries right out of there. We'll have the road back to you know, almost right to with. But he said the culvert itself is in good shape and I said then somebody should have been telling it the whole story when they they looked at this and not just, you know, half of it. Mm. So would that come from the culvert fund if it's Okay. I'm trying to figure, we're, we need to find out exactly what we have in the COVID fund at the moment. I, I did get a quote to put guardrails on both sides and take the barriers right out, and it's okay. $6,000. Okay. Would that be included in the 50000 or no? That not on top of well, it? could, you know, I mean, it could be put in that. It, it's, he doesn't, he's not sure. He, at twenty five to $50,000, you can get this short up pretty good. Okay. Again, looking at what, you know, that not knowing what you're going to get the quotes or bids. But it's not something I think we should just, we should just jump in without having to look at, you know. Correct. I agree. Okay, so we know that but we need to... We know that at the, least 50, the culvert itself is in good shape. We could extend it a little bit on these, uh, not the riverside, the opposite side of the road, by showing right. up that bank. And so. Okay. And it should be cleaned up. There's a lot of dead brush and stuff in that area too. And, and reroute the water coming down the hill further upstream. Mm. And then you want to eliminate the chance of having that wash out. Any other questions to go about this? No. All right. And we're posting roads. I, I want to get through the budget before we. Yep. I need to get through this. Unless someone else wants to take it on. But I'd like to just hold off on it if we could. Unless people have a burning desire to work on it now. Okay. Uniforms. So, I'm just, do we have a, something in the one of the folders we need to sign about uniforms? We have. Um, no. no nothing, to, nothing to sign. Okay. Okay. So, the FYI was that um, we have an opportunity to get insurance on the. You um, should put the insurance on the uniforms. They, they charge you fifty, sixty dollars a shirt. Right. And they charge us eight cents a, an item for insurance. So anybody that turns a uniform in that has a little bit of paint and stuff on, they're going to charge you, you know, like I just changed uniform sizes. Right. And it's going to have paint and stuff on, they're going to charge us. By the time we pay for the right. insurance, it, the insurance would have covered all this. Right. So. So, curiosity though, they clean them for us. Yeah. Okay, so because they didn't do their job in cleaning the paint off the, well, the shirts, mm -hmm. that's our fault? That's a stain. It's paint you can't get off them. They have a lot of chemicals, though. I mean, there's stuff that they could do, right? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be wearing things that they're using that kind of chemicals on this one. Oh, George. <laughs> have an adventure. All right, so... Um, well, I still think that oh, they should be held hey, somewhat accountable. That should have been brought when they sold the uniform package. That should be brought up mm -hmm. when the package is sold. They don't like to set, sell it in the beginning. And the guy told, the salesman told me himself, the, the root salesman told me, he said they want to see, they want you to see what your value is of it first before you know, instead of selling you the insurance in the beginning. So once you start tearing a pair of pants and stuff like that, they see that they're charging us fifty dollars. You can go to Walmart and buy the same uniforms for twenty bucks. You know, I, so they got you, and you're in a contract for what five years? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, most of these con most of these companies, you have three to five years with these companies once you well, sign it's on. conditioned on approval of your budget. Anyway. So it's easy enough but, to get uh, out, so. You know, I mean, I know they've been charging us for items that have been damaged. And All right. So I think what we, we need to uh, we need to um, authorize Caroline to sign up sign us up for the uh, insurance. Uh, I early. think it is in 19's budget. It is in 19. They wanted. She wants but I think to do we want it to start like this now. month. They, right. They, right. The driver did not turn my uniforms in until. Yeah. So, we won't get so he has them. The driver still yeah, has them. So yeah. I'd like to. Um, yep. sure. I'll make a motion that we add insurance to the uniform account starting immediately. Uh, I second it. Any other discussion about this? So what is the outright cost right now for the insurance? It's Eight cents per garment. Per garment, per garment. And I have eleven sets. It's eleven sets. So you have. It's he said it's around three hundred to four hundred dollars. Right around four hundred dollars. A year. A year. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you're only going to pay the so additional month. Okay. Perfect. 
Because so, it's in next year's budget already. Yep. Right. And if yeah. you ask to replace your shirt, how much is it? $50? $50 or $60. $60. Yeah. yeah. And I do. And I said, no. So it's going to cost us more to replace your shirt than to pay for <laughs> one month's of insurance. Yep. So. All right. So any other discussion about it? Okay. All those in favor yeah. of getting the insurance on the uniform say aye. Aye. I've been trying to get some to do this right off. Why don't we have this? The thing is, I don't know. Understand? They know that you're in a position where you're going to get dirty yeah, I mean, and torn, and how they can get away with it. This color you want to bathe with them and stuff? Yeah. You know, well, it wasn't quite sold to It's a way. Stuff. It's a way to sell more items. Yep. It wasn't quite described this way. Right. So and, well, they price. actually went through it. The water department just took on uniforms, and they didn't even offer them the price. And then when they heard what we were doing, Caroline told them to mm -hmm. put the on. insurance on. All right, so we've got that covered, at least. So we we'll, um, don't have them turned in yet. Well, Caroline, um, um, yeah, I just got to put it on this week when he comes. So. Turns out it does work and makes beautiful bales. 
Is it worth more than 500? Yeah, I would think it is. So we should know what, we're, what, what we have before we sell it. I don't disagree with that statement at all. No, I mean, they used to, I guess they used to build cans with it. I think oh, they did yeah, the tin can, the soda cans. Yeah, no. But I mean, this is stuff that I was told it didn't work, so, and then Ed said, well, I'm going to try it for the heck of it. We ran, and then I had uh, Chris come over from Atlantic. He ran it up and down, running up and down. He said, I don't know what kind of bail it'll make, but if it makes a bail, he said, they really, you know, other than right. servicing it and putting a couple safety switches on it. Well, we need to bail paper, right? So, we're going to, you know, we're going to be doing paper. We're going to be trying to bail everything we have so we can, you know, recoup. Right. Yeah, I mean, well, and I'd rather use that than have it buy another one. So, oh, yeah. But I think we have to be cautious that we don't put a whole lot of money into it. No, no, right. I, would, I wouldn't recommend putting have, too much money into it either. You know, right. we should have a cut we do off. Have, we do have a bail. Right. Yeah. Right. So we should have a cut off of what we would be willing to put into it before we turn around and get the 500 back for it. You know right. what I mean? No, so, I but I'm okay with you trying it and working yeah. with it if, as long as you can. Yeah, I mean, if it works. Yeah. And it's, it's foolish to get rid of something, you know. Yep. No disagreement on the side of the Like a case of the back situation when I first started? Mm -hmm. uh, it was on his death's door. Mm -hmm. Apparently it's working again. All right. We appreciate mm -hmm. it, George. Anything uh, else for George tonight? Now, a bit more good news? The other machinery you brought back into the, from the pit? Uh, we uh, had the front of the shop paved. Right. Oh, I saw that on Facebook. Good job, yes. Town, I mean, yes. So I meant I, to say that to you tonight. Good job. Yeah. So, I mean, just wanted to give you a heads up on that. No, that was terrific. Thank you for that, George. I don't have anything else. Well, that's all good news you're telling us, so we like that. Yep. So. Is it okay? Uh, Is it okay? Is it okay? And, yes, he Thank went through surgery fine. School. They started at uh, orientation was Thursday. They go back tomorrow, and uh, they're all up and running and good to go. So they're enthusiastic, so I think we'll have some success with some new people. That's good. Uh, so the first purchase server I have is for Bergeron. Uh, it's number 446, and basically this is for uh, protective clothing for gloves and hoods that we needed to augment to uh, take care of uh, our members. It's 9-23-24. And the protective clothing line right now is four thousand dollars, so this will take you down you know, roughly three, and then we'll see what comes up with you know, the rest of the stuff that we have to get ordered next week. And I'm going to have her do that, give you the invoice right after that. So we're going to this year's this year's funds. Yeah, our last meeting of the year is going to be the 17th. Yep. So 
I'll be all set by then. Hopefully We're going to talk about time. having yeah, another yeah. meeting probably the New Year's week. We'll, we'll have to probably, but it'll be past the fiscal year, so we need to make sure everything. Yep. So I'll move purchase order 1446 to Bergeron, Bergeron Protective Clothing for 923.24 for protective clothing. Second. Right. Purchase order number 1446 to Bergeron Protective Clothing has been moved and seconded. Any comments, questions, concerns? No. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. It was for 92324, so I don't know if you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the invoices and stuff here so that all that can just come back to me. Oh, this okay. whole pile goes to, you got it. Goes to Caroline. Her and I have our little system that works, works pretty good for us right now. Um, my next one is number 445, it's Fire Tech and Safety. And basically, um, with the change in cold weather, we've had two or three CO calls. And one of the uh, meters which we have is done not serviceable anymore. So two things we needed to purchase. We needed to purchase calibration gas, okay. which is a methane-based gas, which is, has to be monthly done to the units that we have now to keep them serviceable. Mm -hmm. So we had to order some of that, and we, we went and ordered a new gas detector. Okay. So we'll have new equipment on both engines. This is coming out of the equipment line. The equipment line... Because as I said the other night, well, you were at the budget committee then there. I've only spent 62% of my budget, so this is kind of cleaning up some of that other stuff. The equipment line itself still has $4,000 in it. Okay. So we're, we're going to put a dent in it a little bit this evening. Okay. So those two meters, uh, no, one meter, two bottles of calibration gas. I think of that gas is you know, a small little bottle like this. Like three, four hundred dollars. So, um, like I said, fire tech safety. You want this one? I move purchase order 1445 of Fire Tech and Safety of New England for four meter gas detectors and two bottles of calibration gas going to the equipment account with a total of $1,162 even. Oh, sorry. Second. Purchase order 1445 has been moved and seconded to Fire Tech Safety in New England. I have a question. Go for it. Is the calibration gas hazard material? Hazardous material? Yes. Do you have a hazardous material cabinet? Yes. Thank you. Number two. Good. Any other questions? No. Seeing none, all those in favor of purchase order 1445 say aye. 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 Opposed? It's a combination of propane, methane, butane mix. Sounds hazardous. Isn't it lovely? <laughs> it is what you have to put into the machine to get it to talk to itself. So, because there's four little sensors inside of each machine for each particular gas that we have in our own meter, and grabs whatever molecules it needs to keep itself functional when we do that on a monthly basis. So, uh, we ran a couple, three calls on that already. One of the meters we used just uh, said that was done. How long will this amount of gas that we're purchasing tonight last year? It's about two years a bottle. Oh, okay. Because we're doing it on a monthly basis. Okay. So that's uh, usually the length of time. Plus, they have a service life on it anyway, so it's only good for about that amount. Okay. We usually get two years for each one that we need. But how many are you buying? Two different bottles. Two different bottles, so, okay. Three different meters. Okay. As always, you know, you can't have one that's generic for everything. Of course. You know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, second thing, equipment line. Um, with all the rain we've been having, instead of snow, we've had three or four calls for water in the basement. We've taken care of some of those issues. But in the course of doing that, one of the uh, pieces of equipment which we use failed. 22-year-old water pack. This piece of equipment we put on our back, it's got a wand, and you go in and you extract the water, and you remove it. So Let me ask you a question. Go right ahead. Why do people call you because they have water in I'm not saying you're doing something wrong. Obviously, you're not. But why would they call you and not say some of it a plumber or, or a HVAC person? Well, sometimes we get there. I'll clarify for you a little bit. Sometimes okay. we get there and there's no more than an inch on the bottom. Yeah. And they want to use our equipment because they don't want to go buy their own equipment. Too bad. 
basically that's okay. what that's the, right. kind of the policy oh, okay. that I've adopted on that. So these are severe cases where there might be well, a tank of tip well, over or something. It could be threatened hot water heater, uh, yeah. heating yeah. equipment, you know, oil right. burners, things like that. Right. So they'll give us a call so we can try to keep up with that for them a little bit. Mm -hmm. But some of it is just that I think you know people don't know what to do or they don't want to do it. Right. Call one one and call us. I would never imagine calling the fire department for that. Call a plumber. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised too. So, are, are, is there any liability for us if we can't control, us as a town, can't control the water? Well, a lot of it's just because these houses are, you know, 100, 100 sure. yeah, years right. lived old. In, lived in they got stone basements and it just, it just weeps in or it's coming up through a dirt basement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we'll try to do what we can and advise them of mm -hmm. what they need to do because a lot of times they don't even know what they're sure. doing. So, we try to do that for them and, and the liability for us. No. So this may, isn't a test, this, I don't want to believe the point, but this isn't necessarily they've got frozen pipes and they cracked and their basement's flooding. This is water's coming out through the Pretty water table, water through, that through the dirt basement. But that's what again, that's, that's that makes more sense to me. Well, now that we are getting... That is an emergency. Yeah. That would make cold water. It goes both ways. I mean, usually we don't get it this time of year. Right. Usually right. we get right. all right. that spring. Springtime, right. So that the ground, ground is partially frozen, frozen. and all yeah. doing a lot of rain and rain and rain. Yeah. So it's finding its way in. But the other thing I'm on this kind of equipment is once we get the cold weather, we always go to two or three freeze-ups of uh, right. sprinkler systems. Oh, mm -hmm. And we've gone mutual aid to other communities where they've had these things break right. and it just overwhelms them. Sure. And so they call in other departments and this is just yeah. some of that equipment. Again, I just was confused. No, yeah. I mean... They could be there. They would get a call for frozen packets on these houses. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Before. Well, we had one, I don't know, a month or so ago for somebody in their basement over here on Pine Street with the, the line to the toilet let go. He couldn't find the shutoff. Because the place was basically in a hoarding situation. He couldn't find out the incoming water to the house to shut it off. So he's there in the plane with you know, the guy holding his thumb in the dike. But he's got two inches of water in his whole basement. So he came in and says, he tried to find one. I don't know where it is. So we, 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 we move all that stuff. Clothes, dirt, pile, this, that. It's right there, shut that off, and we were done. But, you know, we stayed happy. A lot of the water stuff, <clears throat> a lot of it's public relations, and it's more of a positive on that fact that if you can show up and help these people out because they don't have any guidance. Sure. And it looks on the community and the fire department. I'm not opposed to you doing it, I just never would have thought to call mm -hmm. you all for that. <laughs> that Believe me, there is that fine line. There, there was some but people that think were, were problem, abusing the service. Right, because right, people right. didn't know what to do. And right. if I show up somebody's house as an inch of water because they have a moat in their basement and it's come out of that and they didn't want to run over to Home Depot to buy a sump, then I'm sorry, we're not giving ours anymore. Gotcha. Because what happens is we'll run or they'll run it, they don't maintain it. Gotcha. And it burns itself out. So we're kind of done with that loaner thing because it's, gotcha. it's, not, it's not working. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. So this is for 1444 four, four, to industrial safety projects and it's for salvage equipment. Replace the water vac which failed, and also to get more salvage covers, which we also use in a fire situation to cover up things. We had a fire on the second floor, and we right. protect the first floor. We needed some more for the for the new We didn't have it. Okay. Uh, so I'll move purchase order one four 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 in the amount of one thousand six hundred sixty six dollars and eighteen cents to industrial safety products for water vac and covers. Second. Well, I have to say that it's just amazing how much I get to the piece. I saw anywhere from that number up to the little twos. I don't shop around and buy just expensive. It's not that one of my head. Complicated but piece of equipment. Okay, purchase order 1444 is so unmoved and seconded to industrial safety products the amount of $1,666.18. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And again, those two large purchases are on the equipment line. That's, that totals up to twenty something, twenty eight hundred dollars, and it's still four thousand there. So I'm not even close to exhausting that line yet. So everything is well within our operational funding for right now. Last but not least, this one is good old radio equipment. Keep chasing that little puppy all around. Um, started to have some that are about six years old they're starting to fail. So for the radios we've had, we've gone through this down this road before and you understand all the hurdles we're trying to get over. It's even getting harder to find replacement batteries for them. So uh, our radio equipment line still has eleven $1 hundred dollars in it. We found a vendor who's in Indiana who has the radios that we the batteries that we need so we purchased a dozen just because it's getting harder and harder to find them. We've had four of them fail in the last month. They 
just reach his service life. You know, they only get so many charges in it. It's not. So purchased a 1447 RTW radio two way for uh, 12 portable radio batteries. So it's going to be ready tomorrow. All right, I move purchase order 1447 for RTW radio two way for 12. 7.5 volt portable radio batteries for a price of $840. Right around. I don't have to total invoice, but that'll cover what that cost. Okay. For radio repair. <coughs> Set. Purchase order 1447 is so removed from secondary. Any questions? So, so it be 12 that you can keep hobbling along we will. for a while longer. Okay. We'll serve you well with that. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Michelle does for a living, and 
in Concord. Yeah. And we had talked about it at um, when you presented your budget and sent you this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that you she got it. She sent me something like that, I don't know, one or two budget sessions ago. Probably the same, well, pretty yeah, close to the same thing. Pretty close to the same yeah. thing. I don't know, it's just something that once we get through this, we can yeah. maybe have a conversation about. But we just want to make sure you have it. We'll see where we all want to go and what road we're going to go down. Okay. All right. I know where I'm staring at. We'll just see where we go. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, Thanks, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. So the police here. So we're going to table their uh, nuisance ordinance housing standards. Do you have any information on have, the police station town hall warrant article? Uh, I got an email from Mr. Duchon saying that we will have numbers um, tomorrow. So we'll table that for yeah. another week? I do have a police, I think this is a police PO. Yeah, it says police, right? Yeah. It's like police. You want me to do it now? We can do it all at the end, that's fine. But it's not on please. Or I can do it all at Yeah, I will just do it all at the end. Okay, that's tomorrow. fine. All right, so we have town administration budget. We need to take up a couple of things tonight. Um, first thing we have is the um, the um, error on the uh, police full time salary lines. I believe we should probably revisit. Send an amended version back to the uh, budget committee. Correct. It was a nine thousand five hundred forty six dollar error on the uh, police full-time salary line, uh -huh. and we need to make sure it goes back in there. All right, so that would be uh, proposed budget was, what was it? It's just, it's it was the police full-time salary line. It, well, it's, it's a total. All right, so why don't, okay. So we need a motion to add in 9,000, I can't say 546. Okay. Right. I'll make that motion to add increase the salary line. Increase yeah. the salary line for full time salaries for the police department by nine thousand five hundred forty six dollars. Okay, and I'll second it. Okay, so that will now bring the line to in front of front of me here somewhere. So the proposed appropriation was was two hundred and forty eight thousand one hundred so we're going to increase it by nine five four six four six. The new grand total would be two hundred and fifty-seven thousand seven hundred and thirty. Um, what version are you looking at? Obviously, a different version than I have. All right. Well, maybe I am. Hold on. Let me. I got pulled up. I have one. The, the color one. Oh, okay. I'm not even sure if it's the most recent. What's the date on? Uh, well, the date's clearly wrong. At one thirty, one eighteen. I have many, many versions of it. I think this shows is that oh, I have it. Uh, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, thank you, Miles. Sure. Back, back that up again. Try to come back. So the full so on the one that I have here is ten twenty nine eighteen. Is this the colored one? Yep. All right. But what I have for full time salaries is two forty eight one eighty four. Two forty eight. Yeah. One eighty four. Right. Yep. Is that what you have? That's what it has on this. Uh, on the on the proposed appropriation, right? See what there's a negative here. That's where we got caught that there was a negative there because it didn't take anything away. Right. So it was narrow. So it should be an increase of nine, five, four, six. Right. So it should be two hundred fifty-seven thousand seven hundred thirty. to adjust the retirement all that will be uh, that will I think be that, that contains all of the okay. all of the um, areas she had another thing but I don't think she printed it out so but we'll how 
we can that. that. Yeah. So then that should be. So we'll uh, have, okay, so we'll move to increase that line and increase any associated lines that may need to move, move with it by the um, retirement or, or taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, if that hasn't already been done. All right, so all those in favor of making that, those changes say aye. 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 Opposed, all right, so we'll. Make sure Caroline knows about that so she can make that change so the budget committee can have an updated version for Wednesday evening. I think it shows that um, too many irons on the fire. So, that, uh, I'm glad that we have our part time bookkeeper in place now so we can hopefully avoid those types of errors. We have the CIP we need to Can we go back to this, um, to this well, okay. going back up to the regular budget first? Did we ever approve the chairs that Richard was asking for to replace these maroon ones? I don't think we did. We do. You think you did? I don't think I we don't did. think we did either. He yeah. wanted it. A, I'm recommending a budget of thousand no, dollars no, for thirty new chairs. It look like this. Oh uh, yeah, that would be better. Well, they would be cleaner. Yeah, they'd be cleaner. <laughs> they were the last one, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. The ones uh, pick one up the other day. That's the top off top of it. So, but anyways, all right. I didn't know if we if we had accounted for that. So I would think it would come under supplies at the town hall, I guess, mm -hmm. and we have the mats, but we don't have, uh, I think that was our very first um, budget workshop. Did we not mm -hmm. take it out? I, I think we got put in a folder behind things and we remember to do it. I'm guessing that means you want to do it? I think it has to be done. It's not that I personally want to do it, but they're pretty bad. Pretty gross. Yeah. Miles? Yeah. No, I, I think for I mean, I think thousand dollars, it's it's worth getting some. And getting these these um, ones that have upholstery on it because they just I mean it's difficult to clean. And All right. So I would suggest if we're going to do it, I think we should go into town hall supplies. So that was a. Uh, Thirteen hundred dollar appropriation to make it a twenty three hundred dollar appropriation. If that's what you want to do. I'll make a motion that we increase it by a thousand dollars to purchase thirty chairs proposed by the custodian. I'll second that. All right, that's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Passes. All right, so. There wasn't any other edits that need to be made, so we can Not that I'm aware of. change it, send it over to the back over to the budget committee. This is the updated version of the CIP. No, this is just what I'm going to send the CIP, but I want to uh, send the budget committee to the CIP. I'm not sending the whole project. Oh, you have one. proposed one. for 2019. Yeah. I just want to make sure that what I'm what I know is correct. Um, looking at it, we we propose to put 179,400. Yep. To CIP's yep. account. Yep. Okay. And we're proposing in 2019 to replace the town hall boiler, uh, fire department radios, police cruiser. Are we doing the highway truck? 
-huh. highway truck, and the message board with a total of uh, 303,800, correct? Yep. Okay, and so how much is being removed from CIP's budget? From from the existing... Uh, from the, the, so is it the 220 or the 231? That's where I'm confused. 231.9, I think, right? I don't know what that is then. And then it's the, the net that we would be putting, um, we would be doing from direct taxation, would be 71.9, 71 huh? 71 is direct taxation. Okay. okay. So 231.9 comes out of the CIP. And 231.9 comes out of the, mm -hmm. out of Right, isn't that what? I, I just want to make sure I don't know what this is. So let's add. Yeah. So yeah. If, you t if you're spending this, so this and this have to equal that, right? Yeah, let's see. That's what I'm thinking. Three oh three eight. You got it. Okay. So out of CFP is two thirty one nine hundred and. Taxation is seventy one nine hundred based on what we're purchasing, which is three hundred three eight hundred. Correct, and the amount we're putting into the CIP is one seventy nine four hundred. Okay, very good. I'll send that out to you. Thank you. Um, well, we need to approve it first. Let's have a vote. We have a vote on it. No, we have a vote on it. Okay, then let's vote on it. So Denise is moving that that the CI approve the CIP budget with. 179,400 going in for 2019 mm -hmm. with 303,800 dollars worth of uh, expenses, expenditures rather. Uh, 231,900 of the of that total coming from the CIP mm -hmm. with uh, a net of 71,900 needed to be raised by taxation. I'll second. Okay. I move to second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. We'll send it off to send it off to the budget committee. And talking about CIP and SEC, um, do either one of you have time that you can work on the spreadsheet for sure. the you? Sure. Yes, I'm really having a hard time with it. Okay. Um, would you like me to send it to you? Yeah. And, and then it's what it is. It's calculating whatever's on That's there and calculating yep. what it would be. And then, what is the what? Are, what was the amount that we didn't want to exceed putting in every year? Because didn't we? Because we kind of want to manipulate it so it's not. So We'd like to keep it even, right? So I don't think there was an actual. There was an actual. Well, we were doing one hundred. I thought you were trying to keep in that ballpark, between that and probably two hundred. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would okay. Want to go over two. Okay, so. If possible. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm trying okay, to be two things out. Thank you. Maybe. Well, actually, you you can access CFP online, right? I don't know if I. I think some of that access is restricted, but I'll check with Carolyn. Oh, okay. I can make sure that she's okay. going to be able to access um, it. Should, anybody should be in the software be able to access it, I would imagine. I think she did limit who could edit. Yes. Oh, we only maybe want I one. can, but I, I'll send her an yes, email, you and you can contact her once and see. Okay? Yep. Thank you. I appreciate the help. All right. So now we have the reserve funds. Exciting part of the budget. <laughs> Said firmly with tongue in cheek. No. So the capital improvement fund, reserve fund, we've just approved 179.4 going in, right? Mm -hmm. Culvert Reserve Fund. Culvert? Culvert. Yeah. 
So, we have um, proposed rebuilding this fund um, to deal with these Sligo um, cul road culverts and any others that come up. Um, we had originally thought we would put 10,000 in. Um, we want to continue with um, down that road. Do we know what the balance of the fund is? We don't yet, so we don't have to have the, um, what, um, what are you all taking up on one tonight, CIP and what else? Rec, CIP, cemetery. cemetery. So we're not, the, um, the quote unquote town, mm -hmm. no, you're part of the budget isn't towards the end, right? Yeah, 19. Yeah, the last one in December. Perfect, I like the last, all right. Um, so, I would prefer actually to find out how much is in it before we, we decide as well. So, okay. and then the, um, what we have, then we have the Conservation Land Trust Fund, which is typically moving over, not usually from taxation, so it's if uh, things are taken out of, uh, just see, uh, things are taken out of um, current years. Either moved over from the land use change tax, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. land use change tax. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped up. over the town revaluation fund. He did. He did indeed. It says we'll done. start rebuilding in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we spent it this year. Right. right. Correct. So. So, we don't. so you can see how much we put in prior years. And he went up. And then it went up. Evaluation fund. We were putting in 2017, we put in 17,625. Right. You know what? I want to hold off on that one too. But we can do the. Um, where is it? Cohort repair, CIP. Well, they have, they have their contract right here. The four-year contract is ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and eighty, and their one-year contract is five thousand seven twenty. That's for the reevaluation. Contract assessing. Yeah. But that's not. Um, So to do this, the um, reevaluation was approximately eighty-eight thousand dollars. If you if you take the the, the seventeen six twenty-five times five, mm -hmm. um, that's what it would have been. So, but was that an equal go? We don't know if it was know, the, if the same equal, amount yeah, or, I yeah, to, I or to, the ending balance. You could go back and look at it. Yeah. Tell me the one. It's going to tell me the one year. It doesn't have the history for those, but it does have somewhere in here. It has the, uh, the reserve funds are in here.
Aggregate Evaluation Trust. Beginning year balance zero. Beginning year balance income um, ten dollars and nine cents. This doesn't seem to be uh, what I'm looking for, but that's clearly. Maybe we should talk Caroline yeah, about this so we can review it before we can go to the we'll next meeting. Take it up at the next meeting. Okay. In fact, this is an objection. Alrighty, let's get back to our regular schedule program. So we're going to reserve funds are going to be tabled. Alright, budget committee secretary posting. Any uh, any of those boards of volunteers that were asked to, to locate when we want to do something else in town, step forward here? No. Okay, didn't think so. Um, I did notice that Mr. Ordway had posted on one of those Facebook pages mm -hmm. asking people to do it. I don't know, I don't remember which one, but it popped up in my feed. Um, so thank you for that, for doing that. Um, anyone, anyone who wants to be the budget committee uh, secretary, hopefully you'll step forward. It shouldn't be a member of the committee, so it should be a separate person. They're elected to serve as members, not take notes. So. Um, and we'll keep looking then. I know uh, Kate and Andrea were going to um, reach out to people as they came in to see if they might be interested too. So we thank them for that. Uh, the Oak Street MOU, we looked at, we didn't see it in the folder, right? No, I don't have it. We're going to table it then and uh, find out. What is the MOU then? That's the that's the old one. That's August. So we don't have a new one. Oh, we oh, because it was going to go to their legal counsel, right? And then they were going to do it. This so, is August. But is there a place for us to sign off on it that we were, we're okay with that one? Maybe that's why. This has been in there forever. There was just a whole pile of stuff that just needs to be filed. Oh yeah, this this is the uh, the 2018 one signed by Suzanne myself and Jeremy. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well. So it just hasn't come back yet, I'm assuming. Correct. All right. But we were ready to go with it, so I'll ask again to. Okay. The holiday schedule. Oh, so sorry. did we do conservation, or we're not going to do it? We're going to. I said uh, table the all of the rest of the reserve funds until next week when we get. Okay. Them. I have more pianos. I don't know if you Oh, yeah, we just haven't gotten to it yet. I haven't gotten to that folder yet. So the holiday schedule, as I mentioned, we have uh, next week and then the 17th. Uh, Monday, the 24th, the Christmas Eve, is a, would be a regularly scheduled uh, meeting and the 31st, New Year's Eve, also. Um, I, uh, I am not available on the 24th. I'm going to be spending time with my family, and I imagine you probably want to as well. So, would uh, suggest that we not meet that week, and that the following week we might want to meet. Um, it's a new year on um, the third, I guess, because uh, Wednesday is our budget night, right? Yes. We don't get to escape. We have to go. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, Miles, does the third work for you? Yep. The third Denise, you think yeah. it might work for you? Okay, yeah. I'm going to put it in here then. Hold that. What time would we like to meet? Do we want to meet earlier, like at 6, or do we want to keep it at 6.30? What's easier for people? Let's do, uh, let's do 6 o'clock. So that may well work for you, I'm sorry. No. Okay, well, we'll have to find uh, some. Unless you go early. Oh, Thursday. We'll have to ask the uh, budget for the secretary if they'll fill in. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then, so well, we'll figure it out. We're gonna have to. It doesn't. It might not be a full uh, select board meeting. It might be. A, it might be short. So, but I doubt it.
that came in this evening that they would need to have their um, other POs in by the 17th. And put it in my calendar now, so I don't miss the meeting. I just called. All right, so that's it for the holiday schedule. Policy review. That was me. Okay. One of the things that we're having a difficult time is getting policies made, and the more we delay on it, the, I think the more difficult it's going to be for us. And so I had a suggestion that if the, th three, uh, the two of you are willing to, if we all took a policy, one policy, each of us took one, and then worked on it and had updates weekly, we could get like three policies done at the same time. And, you know, it would get us a start. Um, and then when one was done, then we would go on to getting another one. I just think that we have to have a plan because it kind of just is falling through the cracks, in my opinion. Yeah. So, what do you think? It gets away from us. Yeah. yeah it does get away from us. How many policies need to be written? <laughs> there, we don't have policies. There's so a lot of things we don't like, have policies on. Yeah, so. there's a lot of things. I mean, we have the major ones. I mean, we have the sexual harassment one, and we have, yeah. um, I don't know, she named a couple of them, I forget what it was. But the, the ones that she said, the municipal association said, that, or someone said that we needed, these are the ones that we really need. Oh, the insurance company said that we needed this. So um, I think there's going to be a lot. And so just taking on policies in general is going to be overtasking. But if we mm -hmm. each took something, yeah. one, just one at a time, yeah. no, and kind not of doing it, it's up. not going to move forward. No. For sure. It and, and so I just thought well, it might be a little easier if we, you know, can look up and see if we can find some examples and make recommendations. Yep. And so this is what I would suggest. I think it's a good idea. I think we should go forward with it. I think we should find a, and I don't like this, but maybe a Saturday morning where we have a strategic planning session at the first of the year. We can go to once I'd like to get through at the end of the budget, which is going to be coming to an end uh, from our perspective soon. Um, in the budget committee's hands. Well, it already is, but um, fully in their hands. Um, to go through these sort of things, to say, okay, so now that it's a new year, these are what we would like to see as priorities. And not, 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 not the, the financial piece, and that's what we've been baking into the budget. So, but what do we see as if we want to revise or enact policy on X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. We should, I think, have a brainstorming session and look at where we're deficient. I think we can do that right now. Um, and we can do it in a Monday night if that's what we want to do, but we can carve out time separate to talk about it. Yeah, we, we need a, we need a kickoff meeting, right? Like, mm -hmm. what are, what are we talking about the policies? What's mm -hmm. um, what, what, are, what are the resources we need to go and find? Mm -hmm. Right. I think probably Caroline can help us sure. find out what is the most Impressive. important ones at, yep. at the beginning. Sure. And then, um, like I say, they, we just each take one, and and maybe she can give us some suggestions or some um, websites of where to go right. and look. Yep. Um, I'm tasked right now to do um, the recreation department's rec director and assistant rec directors already. I'm working on trying to get through that. It isn't easy. I get it isn't, but you know, but we have to we have to start somewhere. And if we we're doing one instead of trying to do five at the same time, yeah. I think it would be easier if we had just okay. I'm with it. I'm kind with of concentrates on it. You know? I think that's a good idea. Yep. So. We want to look at when we want to have that that session now, or do we want to wait till we get into the new year? Now, are you when you say a strategic planning, mm -hmm. are you saying just with the select board? Yeah. Okay, because I have a bigger picture about strategic planning that we no. should be starting pretty soon too. Yeah. Well, and I think this should be part of it. The, right, but I think that you know this is going to take a little while. We used to do strategic planning here in my younger days. I was on it, and um, and you had multiple people from throughout the, the uh, town and boards, and, and, and it really was good, and I don't know why we ever stopped it, except that people just got hmm. not interested anymore, but I really think that we should re it reactivate a, that. It's own committee? It's or? a planning committee, but it, I mean, it has school, it has fire, it has police, it has all, 
um, residents it had, and it sure. was a facilitator who came and did oh, okay. it. And, um, and maybe that's where it was because it cost to have a facilitator, but it was a really good uh, process, and um, and it got people on task and and what was important and where we needed to start first, and then going, you know, um, doing projects. So, um, so that's something that we should do down the road. In, in the absence we, of that, it's, it's a, but we, we should meeting, be doing absolutely. Something. But um, something we wanted. So the nice thing about not having it as part of a regularly scheduled meeting, mm -hmm. you can devote a little more time and not have, I want to call them, they are distractions. I mean, they're important work that we're doing, other yeah. things, but it's some focus. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. So that's why I say a Saturday might, morning for a couple of hours might be a good, a good way to... to I, can't, I can't think of a better way to... I know. Uh, I was going to say maybe another night during the week versus a Saturday morning, well, but... That's fine. I don't know what you guys' schedule is like, but weekends are busy all the time. So. Yeah. Um, um, I'll go with the direction. We don't have to decide tonight. We can okay. Keep it on the on the on the agenda. Yeah. We'll change it to. I'm going to have her uh, change the agenda. I'm going to change the agenda for next week to say like session. Dash policy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep her under that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to have this be the new header and this be something under, yep. under that. Okay. And other things can come up under it as well. So. Sure. Okay, so let's be thinking about what we want to do and we can pick a date next week then. That's fine. We have a, the Joint Loss Committee is asking us to initiate or enact rather a tobacco free policy. First policy that we don't have to do ourselves. It was, uh, well, <laughs> I've read it. I looked at it today, earlier today, and I think it needs to be revised. But, um, I recall, well, you might, you guys won't recall because you weren't here, but there was a time when we had a number of complaints uh, that would come in to us um, from folks uh, complaining about, uh, specifically at the transfer station, um, employees smoking there, um, and residents didn't care for it. Um, we have an opportunity where at the moment we don't have any uh, employees that smoke on the job, apparently, from what I'm told by joint laws. I don't know. And this might be the time to enact the policy if we're going to do it. So it wouldn't be. Uh, I've read through this a couple of times. It needs it needs to be revised. I, I did a cursory look at other towns in the state. Uh, a number of them have policies like this. They're not quite like this though. So you think this is too strong? No, I, some of the, some of the language is dated. Some of the language isn't used anymore, and some of it is evolving. Um, so, like, no use of any tobacco product, including cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, chewing tobacco, electronic cigarettes, and vapes are not permitted on grounds or within the facilities mentioned. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with any of that, but there's no such thing as a vapes. <laughs> I mean, this is the, this is the world I, I deal with this every single day. This is the, the stuff I do. I help communities enact policies like this, and it wasn't my idea to do it. It was to my laws. So, but I can come up with better yeah, language than that. I think so. if you have. I don't know what I don't know what you call that device. Well, you just say electronic devices okay. because when you so the misnomer is that they're just vaping as harmless water vapor sure. that gets sh shot off. Yeah. It's actually a mixture uh, of chemicals that the main pro main uh, chemical is poly. You know, I'm not going to pronounce it. Uh, it's it's the same thing that's in antifreeze. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And it emits an, uh, an aerosol actually, and there's been tests that show there's carcinogens in the aerosol as well. They're not harmless, it's just the new, it's, it's, it's the, mm -hmm. the tobacco industry is very sly and very clever. They've been producing and selling people a product that's been known, proved to kill them for 60 years. We've known about it. The Surgeon General put out a report in 1964 all about it, yet they're still somehow, they evolved. They're smart. They're, this is the new evolution. They're getting a whole new generation uh, addicted to nicotine. And they're doing it through these devices. They're not combustible anymore. They're through these devices, right. but they still emit a carcinogen. So <laughs> we should be considering them. But because they're so smart, they've been staying in business. I'm going to go off my soapbox in a second. They um, they're always one step ahead of the curve. So if you use if you if you're just a little ca more careful and just say electronic devices yep. or something like that, I'm going to I'm going to check and see if that's what we're still using. Um, then you don't get tied into, well, I'm not using a, a Juul, say, yep. the name brand, yep. that all the kids now are using, because they look like the little things you stick in your, your, your computer. Um, oh. Yeah, they look like um, um, the 
the disc, the drives, the, the thumb drives. Thumb drives. Yeah. Yeah. They look just they're a little smaller than that though. And they attack, kids attach them to the hoodies or their sweatshirts and they go into the they do it and they blow it off and there's they're on a smell, so anyways. Mm. They're doing it in school. There's renormalizing smoking, which is just what everyone wants, right? Mm -hmm. We've all worked so hard to make sure people don't anymore. But anyways, not everyone, I mean, people still do. But. So I'm for this, it's just I don't know if this is the way, <laughs> this is the language we want to use. Yeah, I think... I, and again, know, it was joint laws. They, you was, work in this industry, and I think if there's more modern language, clearer language, then we should adopt. I think, I, I asked where it came from, and they said they did a, a, a Google search. So I don't even know if this is from New Hampshire. It could be from Maine, it could be from Massachusetts, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. But all I know is it was unanimous in joint laws, they wanted us to do this policy, so. Which made me sit up and pay attention, I guess. I thought it might just be one person, but it was all of them, I guess. Anywho, so do you want me to work on uh, this one policy? <laughs> and I will come up with a different language maybe for next week for us. That's fine, I would put it on there. Perfect. Some of it may still be the same, but. Okay. Well, the other hiccup, though, I just want to mention. I don't want to belabor the point, but they mentioned the library, mm -hmm. and uh, clearly there should be people smoking or using tobacco in general in the town library. Um, I think it's on the property then. Right. That's where they, they want. So one of the definitions they have is property means facilities curb to curb, including offices, grounds, adjacent sidewalks. Mm -hmm parking lots, ramps, town-owned vehicles, and employees' vehicles parked on town-owned property. Um, but we don't own the library building. Correct. So, <laughs> correct. So that's like, can you? Can you do that? I mean, it's the Cutter's private, private property, so yeah, I that's, I mean, plus we don't control the library, every library in the state is controlled by board of trustees. They have okay. the authority. We wouldn't want to work in concert with them. So maybe we, we do this and we send it to them to see if they would sign it as well. I don't know. I mean, that's, yeah. Just taking a couple of, we're, we're not at that step stage yet, I don't think, but it's something to think about too. Or we, just, we, or we have, I don't know. I, I mean, I'll think about it some more. But. but there are some really good things about it, you know. Any, any employee that, you know, wants, is, 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 does use tobacco that would like assistance Get them. We'll point them in the direction of smoking cessation programs. I mean, our health insurance policy has them, so you know, there's a state quit line. There's all these things we can help them get that services if they needed it, so, which I think is important. Um, and any visitor violating the policy will be asked to discontinue in a tactful manner. Which I, is that the best way to phrase it? I don't know. But again, I don't know where they got it from, but it's a good first step. So I just wanted to mention the thing about the library. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Okay, inventory penalty. We have um, a spreadsheet or some sort of form in one of the Forms. folders. Yes. Forms in the folder. Yep. But isn't there a... Isn't there like a... T oh, they're there. So if Blank. we come up with any more... Yep. So I just want to make an announcement. If for some reason someone else emails us and says, Oh, by the way, I didn't get mine either. Um, there's a form that Andrea has created for us, but we just had to fill out a sign and send to her, asking that she do the abatement. So. We have two of them? We have two of them. I, I, don't, I think this one we talked about last week, Dennis and Kendra, piece on two, yeah. two properties that needs... Yeah, we, we approved it. They had not notified us. Yeah, we did approve it, so... Yeah. Sign off on that. We already voted last week, didn't we? Yes, we did. We did. We yeah. Last week or the week before, I know we voted it on it. They just week. hadn't got notified that it got approved. Okay. So, uh, another one, Mr. Paul, Johnson, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Johnson, yeah, Paul and Janice Johnson. At, I don't see their address here, but um, also did not receive their. So, we haven't taken an action on this one yet. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson reached out to us claiming that they didn't receive theirs either, uh, and we're questioning why they were being assessed a $50 penalty for something they claimed they never received. Um, what is uh, people's budget? I'm going to ask this question. I don't know if we know the answer. Do we keep track of who asks us for exemptions year over year? I think that's why we're doing this. Okay. We didn't have a system. 
Okay. Yeah. We did not have a system. And so my question to the tax collector was for all of these, are these like sort of frequent flyers? To yes. Are these the same people year after year? Right. And the answer was no. Okay. So Okay. That's well, I didn't hear from the tax collector. I heard from the from Caroline who asked her. Okay. So I, I don't want to I'm, talk I'm to I'm fine granting a, a one-time. Well, it doesn't matter because we're not going to have it next year. So. Right. Right. Okay. I just find it strange that we're having so many that didn't get get them. So was it our fault or was it their fault or was it the fault? So there's two schools of thought, and, right? Yeah. You can, uh, you know, the way we've been falling down on it is saying, well, we're just going to them because how do we prove it? Right. Yeah. right. But really the onus, the law says that you have to produce this form. Mm -hmm. We mailed them all to everybody as far as we know. So we could just say no to everybody, but we haven't done that so far. So because the people that have come to us so far have said, well, we've done it every other year. Why, you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, in the emails they've sent us said they've done it every other year. Mm -hmm. We didn't get it this year, so we've believed them. So I have no reason to believe that Mr. and Mrs. Johnson are also mm -hmm. in the same category. Yeah. I haven't heard. We have a very thorough tax collector that, and I'm laughing at this, that is very good about remembering these things. I think if there were someone that year after year was trying to pull this, oh, no, she would no, have no. told us. So yeah, I just think that you know it's weird. the way we sent them out and all of those kind of things are are questionable and because they're they had stickers over <laughs> closing them in. They're just a sheet of paper, you yeah, know. And, 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 and I think I, I'm not blaming yeah. here. I'm thinking maybe postal service. I mean, maybe. postal service tends to uh, lately has been horrible. They're, they're take how long it takes to get something. But also it could get stuck to something because of that way it was happening. Yeah. And so well, the thing is it's not processed here anymore. So like all the local mail used to be processed. Yeah. It was no, in town. Kind of Kevin and his yeah. crew no, they sent it to yeah. Manchester. Manchester? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every yeah. single piece of mail, right. unless you ask them to hand cancel it, and this obviously they didn't ask no. them to hand cancel a thousand of these forms or hundreds of these forms. Mm -hmm. Like if I go in and want to mail something to a post office box, I just say it's for a post office box and hand cancels. Mm -hmm. If not, it goes to Manchester oh, and then comes no. back. I mean, it's yeah. so. I think you're probably right. I don't think it's a breakdown here. I think it's no. a breakdown. I think it in is. The sorting in Manchester, but no. Anyways, are we going to approve the Johnsons' uh, request? I make a motion that we accept the Johnsons' request for reimbursement or abatement. a credit abatement to uh, for his inventory form. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, and there was one more. Wasn't there? Oh no. I think this was it. Okay. I don't think I saw another one. Uh, Let's just double check we over here. Eleven's right? Eleven. got theirs, and uh, this one's now Johnson. Yes, thank you. Keel. There was four. Yeah, there, was, there were four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they were, we're up to date now, I think. So I know the the, the Bissons or Bissons, I'm mispronouncing it, um, sent us an, an email asking why they hadn't heard from mm -hmm. us. So, but that's why because we had an act on it. We had another form yet to sign. So. Alrighty, that's taken care of. Town administration, board member activities. So I have two things on here I'd like to hear about, if you don't mind telling us. How did the Lamprey, Lamprey budget meeting go? Bizarre. Hopefully it didn't last more than half an hour. Um, it was not more than half an hour. Oh, good. Okay. Um, but it was bizarre. <laughs> Usually I'm very happy. <laughs> um, so the, the people running the meeting were, were late. Um, so oh. we're, I don't know who's, who's who. But any, anyway, so we sat there for many minutes. So we had a quorum. Um, we to always we had to call someone um, um, to come drive there to make a quorum, but there was yeah. a quorum. Yeah. Um, and they, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, they did approve both um, the reserve budget um, and the operating budget. Okay. Um, and I, I don't have those numbers. I, I thought I had them in my stack here, but I don't. Um, and I, they were the, what they were. That was emailed out, right? Yep. Yep. I don't have them running either. But um, the, there were any surprises? There were no surprises okay. there. No. Well, thank you for coming. Sure. That was right. Anticlimactic. <laughs> Which is a good thing. And the budget committee, Denise. How did the meeting go on Wednesday night? Did you oh, both go? I I was I I had it in my head it was Thursday night. I apologize. Oh, yeah. yeah, no problem. It was okay. <laughs> okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. 
Were there any, what were, so there was a concern, obviously, that raised about the, the police full-time line that we've resolved. Yep. Yep. Were there any other questions or concerns that they had about um, those three pieces of the budget that no. have been resolved? No. I think we're all set. Okay. It was only the police that I needed. That was my area to resolve. Okay. It was a police fire and it was the third? Police fire and... Library. 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 Okay. Well, we don't control that. All right. Well, thank you for those updates. Anything else happening? Um, tomorrow night is uh, planning board. Oh yes. Anything big on the planning board agenda? I haven't seen the agenda yet. So yeah. um, there's a continuation of the meeting um, for Oldenburg Lane. That's what it's called. Oh, yeah, they want to change their. They want to change uh, them to single family homes. Um, all of them. Mm -hmm. All of them. They're yeah. dropping. It'll be one less resident. So from three duplexes mm -hmm. to five homes. Yeah. So it would have been six. Six buildings. Six buildings. So it's going to be five buildings? Six yes. units. Six units, but three buildings. Three buildings. Right. They were duplexes. Yeah, so that's right. Five. So it's going to have enough room to... Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm not on there. Um, so you guys. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a carefully engineered plan. Um, yeah. It looks like they're squeezing things in, but you know, as long as they meet the, the letter yep. of the there was a uh, at the rules. last. I don't think I gave you guys an update of the last from the last planning board meeting, but there was a not a huge crowd, but the, the, the butters showed up to express concerns and About more uh, the, the the road and visibility. And Caroline did a great job. Explaining that they already have an approved plan that they could go and act upon. Mm -hmm. They don't. They're coming back and asking for a revision to that plan. So, all right. I don't know the the really big, uh, as I recall, the really big objection was they didn't want folks didn't want uh, duplexes down there. So, yep. and this apparently uh, resolves that piece of it. I mean, people didn't want development at all down there, but that's yes, yeah, lawful to do it. So, mm -hmm. it's what it is. So they're also. Um, they're going to be water where the water goes. Pardon? Um, the houses are going to be in an association. Um, like a neighborhood association? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, it's. Oh, I guess what they have down on um, River Road there. Uh, yeah. There and um, so all of the common land ends up in an association. Okay. Well. Um, which actually is, I think, beneficial. Um, the rain gardens that they were proposing we get, them to put in, yeah. get, will get maintained through this association. There. So in theory, um, the town reminds them that they're supposed to do it. Um, I do think it's a good thing. It's just a yeah, huh. interesting. Yeah. Well, it, so we the the Chimberg one I thought was too. Okay. They have a neighborhood association. I thought I'm not sure. Someone told me. Maybe not. But the. Um, what do they call the woodlands? The woodlands. Yeah. They, oh, they have one down there. Association. Yeah. 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 Kind of tennis courts and other recreation things. Mm -hmm. Anywho. All right. Well, thank you, Miles. Good luck with that. <laughs> Keep us posted. All uh, right. Anything else? Yeah. So I've got a scrap of the planning commission meeting. Friday morning, I think. Let's double check. Thursday, sorry. Thursday evening. Oh, thank goodness. It's like evening, not a morning. The kid will be so happy. All right. So, yeah, I've got to strap our regional planning commission this week. Dave. I'm glad you. Yeah, you win. I win. I win. Thanks. <laughs> um, Either way, more budget stuff. Building permits, or that folder, anyways. We have um, a permit for a sewage disposal system. Hey, stamp time. 160 General Sullivan Lane. I'm going to do what you want to do. What? Should I just sign and all that? I don't care. You can do what you want to. Just tell them what you're doing. Yeah.
forth and dig. All from the red folder. That's it? That's it. Yay, red folder. Okay, so I have a purchase order 1541 uh, quality response systems, three adult smart gag gags is that or pads pads, pads cartridges. cartridges for AED. Oh, for the defibrillator. Yeah, I'm gonna have to talk to Bobby about his handwriting. Uh, one three of them for sixty five dollars each for a total of one ninety five twenty dollars shipping. PO is for two hundred and fifteen dollars. Second that. Okay, purchase order fifteen forty one to quality response systems has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Purchase order one five five seven for Kelly Anderson for two first aid kits. Three thirty-seven forty-seven each, total seventy-four ninety-four, and one case of sixteen ice packs for twenty dollars and four cents, with a total of ninety-four ninety-eight, coming out of uh, Winter Rec. Second that. Okay. All right. So purchase order fifteen fifty-seven has been moved and second. This reimbursement for things she's bought. I think she probably put it on her account and she's being reimbursed, but that's what she's getting. Okay. We talked about this at our last okay. meeting. Okay. All right. Alright, for 94, 98, all those favor say aye. 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 Disbursement, Michael Rolo, December 3rd, the amount of requestment, uh, amount requested for disbursement is $1,200 for stipend. Are you getting? I'm not signing. <laughs> I can't sign it. You have to sign it. I can't sign oh. it. I can't. Oh, okay. I'm not going to. Do we not have to vote on it? You just have to sign mm -hmm. it? The request for this. Oh, there okay. are budgeted disbursements. I mean, uh, Disbursement, Denise Knowles, 1127, Selectbook stipend, $3,000. You haven't been taking yours. I haven't quarterly. been taking mine. All right. And you just got here, so right. yeah. that's why I'm only getting $1,200. So I'm sorry, take my other thing for sure. Okay. And that will bring us all current to the end of our Correct. end of our term, or end of our year, fiscal year, January 1. New year begins January 1, and then the new uh, salary year, year, year comes in. I don't know why I have this. Do you know what? Is, is this an acknowledgement that we paid it? it? Miles didn't sign it. He wasn't here. He was out sick. Oh, that was yeah, it. It's fine. Oh, it's he just a receipt it. that we paid? Yeah. It's, is that yes. what that means down there? Okay, so it's just a file. Yeah, it's just a file. Okay. It's, file. Oh, so file. it's, um, it's for the... Uh, uh, county Stratford County Commission's oh, yeah. office for seven hundred and twenty two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars our portion of the county um, Stratford County Commissioners um, to the selectmen police chief fire chiefs um, do I have to read this whole long letter so it's Bob it's also coming okay. that the county just back so to five percent yeah five instead of giving the five percent back like they do every year Bob and the other chief suggested just keep it as five percent mm -hmm. and reinvest it in other thing, in things with dispatch. Yeah. So then you don't lack it at the end of the year for special assessment or something. Yeah, it was found that so. county if you want to read it. Miles. And just an advisement that that's just that gonna that's what that's that going up five percent, but we knew that. And I was gonna say 
the final. So for the disbursements, it can be done quarterly. So the auditor doesn't want us to get paid before we earn it. Before we earn it. I mean, it's it's state. four thousand a year, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, what do you what is in your red folder? This was building permits. This is all the things that come from the farm. I don't want to get these disbursements misplaced. So, well, Caroline will. Does we'll she know what that. this is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna leave just right leave it there. right there. Perfect. All right. And that's all I have. All right. Give me the input. Um, Celia Leopold, Washington Street. Have we? Thought about possibly talking to Stratford Regional Plan Commission about a facilitator for strategic planning. We have not. But maybe they could have services that we could offer. And if that does come with a fee, you might want to know sooner rather than later. So just you know, there's, there's so there's two different things we're, we're thinking about. So yeah, there's the strategic planning that the select board has done. We didn't do it last year, but. Um, has done in the past several years where we get together and we just have a, a workshop brainstorming session about what we want to tackle throughout the year. And then there's the larger picture that Denise has brought up. That's separate. So we haven't even decided if we want to go down that route yet. But if we do, we'll definitely be reaching out to the Regional Planning Commission. And there's a couple of other groups that provide facilitators for a fee. Mm -hmm. so, but that would be one. Thank you for the suggestion. We also have a trained facilitator that has done it, that did it in the past for us for, I can't remember what it was about, do you remember? Judy Nelson mm -hmm. came in and we were all sitting in there. I can't remember what it was about now. It was important, I, it really was. I just, I just can't remember what it was at this late hour, sorry. But thank you, it's, it's a good suggestion. We need to put this up. Yeah, you just need someone who is, you know, um, can run the meeting and, yeah. Um, You'll just keep people on task. Right, yeah. That's it. Really, that's all it yeah. is. And you probably wouldn't have to pay somebody to, to do it if you could, or or smaller stipend if you hire somebody who is in the right. But yeah, it's a good suggestion. And the budget committee opening. Do they cover the meetings in January and February for SB two? Are they, they responsible for they those? They would take the minutes. Yeah. There's still an opening if you'd like a position. I will consider. Mm -hmm. No. SB, no, SB2, isn't that done by... Um, the clerk. The clerk. What were you talking about? The, the, uh, the, um, are you talking... Well, isn't there the, a the public hearing? But there's a budget. There's yeah. Yeah. budget. You, you mean the deliberative? Yes. The uh, deliberative session, session would be done by the, the clerk. clerk. Yeah. But the... Yes. As in January will yeah. be done by, by our... The, the secretary, yeah. the recording yeah. secretary. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be one day and then all the rest of them are... With the changeover in the way in due town meeting, yeah, I <coughs> want clear vision. What? So let's just say, for sake of argument, that you wanted to take this position. I'm not saying you have to. Just let's just say you wanted to, right? So you wouldn't. You would be busy at the public hearing, but you would be free to make comments at the deliberative session because you would be sitting with the rest of us. Because the town moderator would be running. All right, so then by consensus, we will adjourn at 8.36. Really budget season will be over soon enough, and we will be out of here by 8 o'clock every night. We've only night. had one meeting. It's not even close to being over. <laughs> I mean, from our piece. Over.